Um, all right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Joe Schmo Show, episode number four. I'm joined today, as usual, by Jefferson, uh, Gideon, and Emilio. Um, Gideon's our special guest today. He ran some Bitcoin ATMs in Germany many years ago. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, just to give a couple of statistics today, according to Coin ATM Radar, there's 5,404 ATMs. So that's up about 200 from last week's show. Um, so still growing pretty quickly. Bitcoin's still pretty steady at about 10,000. So uh, yeah, with that being said, uh, Gideon, did you want to tell us some about uh, what you were doing? Uh, what was it, three or four years ago when you uh, had mm -hmm. some Bitcoin ATMs in Germany? Yeah. Um... As you already said, we tried it, uh, I think, 2014, the first time. And, uh, of course, the situation was very different uh, uh, to today. It was kind of dark net money. All people are scared because it uh, went down from 1.2K to $4 or $200, something like this. And, uh, yeah, some, only some dark net kiddies went to my uh, ATM <laughs> and bought Bitcoin there. Um, the second thing was uh, the uh, regulator uh, situation was also much more difficult than today, um, and this is this is why we decided to uh, yeah cancel this this business to this time. And then I th sold the machine to you. Um, I don't know where it's now. But it's I think... in my living room here in Barcelona. Actually, oh, we're yeah. about to be redeploying it, but um, they're running. It's still running strong. Still running strong. It was out there for a few years. Unfortunately, my partner on it never paid me, so uh, yeah, it, it didn't make me much money either. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and then uh, after this, we uh, uh, founded the blockchain hotel uh, in Essen, Germany, next to Düsseldorf. There is a, a kind of a workshop, seminar hotel. We also host a conference and meetups. Um, we also host uh, the German P2P lending, uh, not lending, sorry, uh, exchange platform. Um, because Germany is, I think, one of three countries in the world where local Bitcoin is not offering its service. And um, they canceled offering service uh, in Germany five or four years ago. And that's why we thought it's, uh, yeah, cannot be that we are living in a country where you cannot uh, have access to a P2P exchange. And that's why we made this uh, platform, bitcointref.de, uh, where you can, like eBay, just make an offer and uh, find people for, for uh, buying and selling the car. Yeah, that's my story. <laughs> now, over at the blockchain hotel, I was there for one of the events a few months ago. You guys have an ATM now. Um, yes. Is that your ATM? No, uh, we have an Austrian uh, partner who runs all this uh, back end and all this uh, money uh, transport. And uh, we only uh, we only offer this place and the electricity. And that's the main point why we did it, because uh, all the legal stuff and all this yeah, risk that is uh, combined with uh, running an ATM here is up on them. So we, th we said, yeah, let's push it forward. We also have no KYC up to, uh, I think, 2,500 euro. And that's also unique in Germany. Yeah. And we will look how long does this will run. Um, there is a new law uh, just four months ago it's uh, it says that you need a banking license but um, yeah as i said um, the european law is different from the german law and germany the banking authorities in germany cannot act like they are more worth than U brussels you know european lo law is uh, also for germany so that's why we think we can uh, run it further Hopefully the European law can get maybe a little more specific as well as to exactly what is permitted. But after, um, after, after European law, we can run this ATM because uh, Switzerland, Austria, we have hundreds of uh, Bitcoin ATMs without license. Right. And in Germany, how many ATMs would you say there are right now? Uh, <clears throat> it's very uh, volatile, let's say. Uh, four <laughs> weeks ago, we had around about 20. Two weeks ago, we had about... Uh, I think eight, because one of these uh, providers who's uh, coming from the gambling industry also uh, canceled this business because I think he didn't want that anyone is looking closer to their business. And <laughs> that's why they said, no, um, yeah, let's cancel this. And right now, I think we have four or five. Okay. And four, or, four or five from the company who also runs the Bitcoin ATM in our uh, blockchain. All from the same company. Yeah. yeah. I think okay. so, but maybe I'm wrong. In Coin ATM Radar, there are some more, but uh, the re the reality shows that the half of them is offline or whatever. Yeah. 
That's a common problem, even in the United States. So I also, I also uh, got the feedback from uh, the provider that uh, the um, Bitcoin ATM radar also have not the nicest back end and nicest customer support, but I don't know. I don't know. I've used them for a few years. I haven't found it to be too bad. Uh, I emailed them. They emailed back within a exactly. you know, couple of hours. That's what I heard, too. Yeah. Um, so you're not really working anymore with ATMs directly, or are you doing something outside of uh, Germany that's ATM related? Uh, not really, no. We are uh, hosting, as I said, the conference. That's our main baby and uh, the workshops. And um, yeah, we are focused on the, this education part and and of course, community. Uh, we have uh, one meetup a month, where we also have special guests. You were, I think, three or four months ago, you were a guest also at our meetup. Yeah, the yeah. Pre, the pre-conference meetup. Yeah, exactly. That was a, I had a great time there. Uh, it was my first time, but we all had a great time. Um, I noticed that the ATM that they have set up at the Blockchain Hotel there in uh, Essen is um, charging five percent commission. So, you know, four that's still five. the case. Four point five. 4.5 percent that seems yeah. really really low to me i think uh yeah. i think it should be fair well well below industry standard i don't even think uh, you can yeah no nobody's even under double of that in the united states okay wow i mean we I still so. i think that uh, we're charging something like 25 percent on average in the u.s right wow. now this is, Emilio, not... is that something along lines uh, same as you can't hear you but yeah, I think that he's uh, doing about the same. Eighteen uh... percent. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so I mean, it's. Uh, I I was shocked when I saw that they were doing it for four point five percent. I just I immediately was thinking, oh well, there's something wrong here, or maybe no, that's one direction. Or... <laughs> <laughs> it was not my decision. Yeah, it's it's the business case of this Austrian guy. So uh, we said, fine, let's do it um, because five five point four uh, four point five, I think is fine. Yeah. That's really, really, okay. really low. But uh, yeah, but uh, okay. Well, cool. Have you noticed a lot of traffic in there? Is it similar to uh, your early <clears throat> days uh, back in 2013 or no, 2014? No, no. It's a very different situation. Uh, we had a massive, uh, massive amount of people who came to this only for looking sometimes or having 10, 10 euro Bitcoin or whatever like 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 this. Uh, we also had the newspapers. Uh, in-house with some articles uh, was a good action for a promotion for us also so everybody was talking about oh the first bitcoin atm again and yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah many firsts on that one all right well let's uh move along then to our next subject here let me see um what we got um so the bitcoin etf the sec says no because the price might be manipulated by the gold etf what do you guys think about that? Well, you know, this is the SEC that can't even regulate uh, a company like GE that's now accused of some like $40 billion fraud. So, talking about price manipulation, GE has been doing that for the last like 10 years or something and getting away with it. And if they don't get away with it, they just get fined. So it's always been, nice. you know. <laughs> And then, okay, we did something wrong. A billion dollar fine, and uh, we'll call it even. But yeah, That's exactly right. So, I I don't know if I mean we do. We supposedly had a more friendlier SEC, uh, a couple of appointments by Trump, friendlier to crypto. But so far, that they haven't changed their stance other than the Bitcoin futures. It's about the only thing they've approved lately. Yeah, what is that on the uh, that Chicago Mercantile Exchange or something like that, right? Well, no, the box. The box got launched. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't read about that yet. And so at least you can trade uh, more Bitcoin futures. I do know that a lot of uh, institutionals, uh, particularly like Fidelity and even Schwab, are really wanting to, to trade in cryptos. But they're all just waiting for the SEC. Yeah, I noticed even on my Fidelity account now that they have a direct link. I mentioned this on the other show. They have a direct link to uh, Coinbase now where you can easily buy or sell Bitcoin right through Fidelity's interface exchanged on Coinbase. Yeah, and now with Coinbase purchase of Zappo, uh, they're the largest uh, uh, holder of cryptocurrency in the world, I think. Seven billion. Okay. How is it over there in Germany? Do you guys have a lot of uh, options to buy securities or anything like that with Bitcoin or is that extremely limited? 
Um, the German, uh, there is one German platform, bitcoin.de, uh, that's also a P2P uh, platform, but uh, connected to a Fedor bank. So um, it's very hard to get the limit up to maybe 10K or something like this. And um, then you need to, uh, yeah, make two or three transactions from your bank account to verify and all this stuff. And uh, what, what about so far as like securities, though, so far as futures or uh, mm, these kind of things? To be honest, I, I don't know any German company who's working in this field. There are, of course, some STO stuff uh, running here, Bitwala, for example, and they also offer service in Germany. Um, but uh, th there will come many, but the Germans are very yeah, slow and solid with the work. So everything needs to be 100% clear before they go uh, in the market. And um, this is why maybe the quality later is better or not. You can discuss this, but um, it's even worse to run a Bitcoin business here in Germany uh, instead of maybe Netherlands or uh, Switzerland. It's all around the corner and much easier. Right, I got you. I feel the same way uh, with the United States. But um, Emilio, do you use any of these futures markets or these Zappo? I have a Zappo account. I've had it for a few years. I see them at all the conferences now. I, I haven't used any, honestly. Um, but it's it's interesting to me. Um, if I get a steady bank account, maybe I'll be able to have access to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, definitely. We should get on the next episode. We should have a good discussion on banking uh, because there's some. There's some very interesting things going on there, too, especially in the United States with some new banks that are working, uh, small banks that are basically risking their licenses to work with these uh, crypto companies. And uh, it's yeah. going to be interesting to see how that pans out. I think right right now, uh, Bitwala is a really, really in interesting project. It's a German startup. I also know all these guys, and um, I'm very sure they will ma make a great job because uh, they are real German guys who, who look really in the, every detail, so it should work. Are those the guys that are doing like a bill pay service right now? Um, no, they have a, a debit card right now, Bitwala. Okay. It's like a bank account connected to a wallet, but the different to, uh, uh, difference to, uh, for example, Wirex is uh, that you hold your own keys. And that's uh, a, a very important fact for me. Emilio, do you use any Bitcoin debit cards? You say you have problem with banking. Um, so you do just keep everything in cash or do you use some of these Bitcoin debit cards or do you have any other solutions? You know, I, I have a BitPay debit card. Uh, I actually never used it. Um, I really didn't like how when I send Bitcoin to the debit card, it instantly converts it. Um, so that that's one thing I really didn't like. Oh, what Gideon is talking about seems very appealing to me because obviously I like to hold the keys. And if uh, I'm going to purchase something, it would be great if it could just convert it like on the spot. That would be very nice. I also have one of those BitPay cards that I've also not ever used. And I have a wage can or something like that. Well, I got a whole pile of them. But my issue with all of them, no matter where I looked, uh, I, I think that the main problem I have with most of these cards is that they just have too high fees. And if you compare it to like American Express or Visa, um, who you get to pay at the end of the month, I mean, what's the real advantage to exchanging your Bitcoins now, assuming that it's going to go up, instead of waiting until the bills due and then waiting 30 days, you know, that you get a grace period to pay? Mm -hmm. And they also have much better protection. I had very specific problems. I can't remember which card it was. I don't want to call anybody out in specific. But uh, with one of the cards I was calling up, and it was, you know, somebody over in China answering that barely spoke English and was telling me, I think A&X was the one that's behind this card. I can't remember. That was years ago. And it was just so difficult to um, figure out what I was paying or how much money I had in there and what was going on and why it didn't work. And every single day, I would get declined for something. We were using this back at Denver Bitcoin Center. I had given it to one of the guys that worked there to put charges on for the, uh, you know, when he bought food and water and this kind of stuff. And just literally every day I get a message, Mike, it's frozen again. I got to call over to China again. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. But uh, <laughs> no real service because there's no competition really yet in the space for uh, for the Bitcoin back debit cards. Yeah. Well, there's a couple that uh, I was planning. I mean, I've already ordered, you know, uh, from both. I'm waiting for them to show up. There's Crypto.com, I think is one of them, and uh, the MCO uh, had their own. Uh, so I have on both of them their uh, lower end cards coming in by mail. So 
Uh, perhaps on a future show, we can just do a live demo of them. Yeah, I wouldn't mind ordering a few of the different options myself, but uh, I think it'd definitely be cool for all of us eventually to have some some cooler options there because right now it's yeah you know, what I've seen in the past is not a lot of happy people with these debit cards. True, true. You've used one before, Gideon, or no? Yeah, I used Bitpala already three or four years before, mm -hmm. uh, but then they canceled that service again because all this license stuff with I think uh, I forgot the name. This, there was one middleman, one service provider. Who uh, uh, who uh, cancelled the contract and also Mobi? I, I didn't remember. I don't remember. Uh, there were many cards who were affected from this, and then they worked now two years on getting this license stuff clear with the Solaris Bank in Germany, and now I got it again. But I st st still didn't use because I got it four weeks ago or something like this. But they only charge zero dot five uh, percent, I think, fee. It's very very uh, cheap. That's pretty reasonable, yeah. But it, remember, Visa and American Express actually pay me to use their card with rewards yeah, and all okay. sorts of other yeah. such. If you look from the right. side. Yeah, that's very true. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I was just agreeing. You know that. I mean, I, I have a, a Costco card, and once a year I get a check for more than $1,000. So, you know, and I, I never have paid interest on that card. With the Bitwalla guys, did you guys all get your money back out of your accounts on all this when they closed yeah. down? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So at least they've got some history, but I mean, I give like Costco or American Express has a lot longer history, a lot more proven uh, reliability there. <laughs> Even if they are hoping that you're going to be stupid and borrow money and then pay a fortune and slowly repay it. So, I mean, again, that's not really American Express's, uh, you know, fault. It's our faults for... Uh, <laughs> using the service i mean if you look at everybody with bit well what was it called a few years ago they had that where you could uh, borrow bitcoins and everybody was borrowing bitcoins and then it went up 100x and everybody lost their asses i can't remember what it was uh which site it was but i think there were many <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'm sure but all right yeah so um keep us updated uh jiddy and on your bit card and let us know how that works Definitely. out in the end if you end up using it a lot or not, but a half percent, yeah, that's pretty reasonable, especially if they give you a decent conversion rate, which is the whole other question is what rate you're actually I getting. I think they're connected to Kraken. I'm not 100% sure. I need to double check. Oh, but Kraken's pretty uh -oh. legit. Yeah, I would trust that uh -oh. rate. Uh-oh. Why? <laughs> you don't oh, like man. Kraken? No, I, I uh, wired the money and it took them a month to credit my account. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, they're probably uh, busy. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that was uh, that was funny. <laughs> Hopefully, Bitcoin went down a bunch while you were waiting, and uh, you got a much better price there. Uh, I actually, I think it went up uh, about maybe three x. <laughs> oh, great! I've yeah. I've been using them for many years, and uh, when I first used them, I sent Bitcoin, so I didn't send wires. I do remember though one time sending them a wire and it taking a few days, but I use them every now and again, and it, it clears the same day these days. Very nice. Uh, I think uh, when I sent it to them, they were using a third party to accept their wires. They've got um, pretty big now, though, man. I think they've yeah. got a, they've got to be one of the top five. Wow. Do they still have the four hundred seven errors when you're trying to trade? I haven't logged in there in at least a few months, but uh, I, I I don't know. I did. I always thought their software was all right, though. I the main exchange I use is SFOX, and it's like a meta exchange. And they trade on Kraken, they trade on some Chinese exchanges, so you get the best price, you know, of whatever exchange is being used. Uh, it'll automatically transfer the funds and everything, so you don't have to have 10 different exchange accounts. They don't have the oh, best interface cool. either, but I like their pricing. And they Very credit nice. my wires the same day. But all right, well, unless you guys can think of anything else super interesting to uh, talk about, we can go ahead and wrap this up, I guess. Well, if y'all are game, there's the whole fake Toshi thing going around now. <laughs> Please don't right. talk about this. Yeah. I didn't follow this. <laughs> I haven't been following either. Why don't you tell us all what's going on over there with fake Toshi? Oh, well, just some schmuck is using numerology to try to prove that he's Satoshi, but uh, he's even changed his name a couple of times. And uh, But the thing is, I mean, nothing about what he says adds up. The way he writes is different than the way Satoshi writes. Um, you know, he can't prove the transactions. He claims he lost the hard drive with you know, 900,000 Bitcoin on it or something. So, yeah, nothing. nothing. Oh, and he's promoting an ICO. 
<laughs> yeah, of course. This is probably what, like the fourth or fifth fake Toshi now in the last couple of years. So that's why I'm all in favor of that new BIP. You know, we have a fake Toshi numbering scheme so we can keep track of them all. <laughs> the fake Toshi, uh, fake. I, I was looking at earlier, fake Toshi and fake Trishi or something. What was it? I, yeah, fake three she, fake four she. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know that I believe that uh, Satoshi wouldn't be capable of uh, proving himself if he wanted to. I think it would be a very cut and dry, clear thing that if he wanted to prove who he was, uh, which he obviously has very, very many reasons not to do, um, that he would just do it. You know, I, I don't, he's not going to lose his private keys or something like that. You know, yeah, he's probably the I, kind of guy that's got it memorized. <laughs> well, the one person that I do believe probably figured it out um, I mean, say what you want, but it would be John McAfee. Um, it, the thing is, he's got the resources to figure out uh, who it was. There's one, only one time that Satoshi slipped and let his IP address be revealed. And that's in a transaction that he did with Hal Finney. And that IP address was traced to a Van Nuys cable modem connection. So you have a date and a time and a place for oh. Satoshi Nakamoto. So that's the thing. So somebody like John McAfee could probably get those records, and I think he did when he said he figured it out. I, I would believe him. Yeah, I, I would potentially believe that, but uh, that's still I think that's still a pretty big stretch. Uh, but conversely, I think if Satoshi did want to identify himself, that he wouldn't need, you know, we wouldn't need IP addresses and any kind of concoctions. He could just simply sign something, you know, and say, unless he did actually, well, he said he destroyed some of the keys, but I don't think he destroyed all of them. He never claimed he destroyed right. every one of his private keys. So um, I think it would be easy enough to say, hey, I'm Satoshi, and uh, here, if you don't believe me, send me a message and I'll sign it, and, you know, then we can go from there. But again, if you do that, you'd be violating so many laws in so many countries currently for creating this uh, Bitcoin, not to mention... Uh, Every country would want to be after you to try to, you know, hire you or not hire you, but force you to uh, compel you in whatever way to yeah. uh, help hack it, help, uh, you know, whatever else. So I think he has well, very many reasons for staying hidden. I mean, you say that, but then, I mean, you look at Vitalik Viterin, he's the creator of Ethereum, right? And nobody's going after him, per se. So I don't know. I would think that Satoshi would be pretty, well, a little bit safer today than even a few years ago. Yeah, I if think he so. Were to come out. I think so, too. And you look at people like Fluffy Pony and these guys yeah. from Monero, and they're all publicly known figures as well. And those right. coins are all uh, dark coins. Right, exactly. So if Satoshi's out there watching us, come on back, man. We, uh, we're ready for you we to sign you. a message. We need some direction here, baby. Yeah. <laughs> there was, there was uh, some weeks ago, there was another story about this uh, hacker who's uh, in jail right now. I don't remember in detail, but uh, he also claimed, and he uh, has a name similar to Satoshi, and um, it was, I think, four or six weeks ago, one of another, uh, I think the 100th Satoshi fake story. I don't know why people are uh, all, always looking on this, because software is out there, and uh, I don't care who Satoshi is, to be honest. Yeah, I don't really care who he is either. Uh, if he came back, I would definitely listen to what he had to say, though. But of course, uh, yes. But uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think he will come back. I don't think so either. If it's even a single person. Well, that's it. That's the other thing. It could be a team. Exactly. That's my thought. I, it's a fourteen years old guy. <laughs> or a government. No a government. Yeah, maybe. I don't think so. Government. I mean, they would not write. Not code smart enough. Clean. They would never not, write not code smart. that clean. <laughs> I mean, some people were speculating with Tor that, like, uh, that it was just created to identify people because a bunch of the exit nodes were being run by uh, the government in some capacity. I don't know the specifics, but you know, I, I wouldn't put it past them. They've got a lot of money to uh, play games with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. All right. Well, I guess let's tie this up then. Uh, thank All you guys right. for joining. Uh, Gideon, uh, I had great time at your blockchain hotel uh, thing oh, that was going on over there. Yeah. I will definitely make it back again sometime, and we'd like to have you on the show again anytime. Emilio, good to see you, and uh, Jeff, yeah, good to see you. All right, thanks, awesome. everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, guys. Michael, thank you. See Bye. you soon.